To Mr. Biggs? No. no. Okay. Chair recognizes uh, Mr. Roy. Thank my colleague from Texas. And um, I would simply note, and I just came from another here, I know we've got votes coming on the floor, uh, the extraordinary concern that we have with bureaucrats making law, right? I mean, that's at the crux of this. We can talk about guns, we can talk about uh, putting bad guys in jail, I'll do that in a minute. But at the crux of this is a bureaucrat making a unilateral decision to try to turn millions of Americans into felons, to advance a radical leftist agenda, which is clearly what is at play. And I wonder if, Ms. Swear, if you could comment to the extent you, are, you already haven't, but just to reiterate, the extent to which the unilateral action by bureaucrats at an agency, at ATF, to do what Congress has not done, how that is clearly in violation of our separation of powers principles uh, at play. Uh, so our Constitution, as you mentioned, is set up uh, with separated powers. We, you have the executive branch whose job is to enforce the law, and you have Congress uh, who passes laws because Congress is held accountable to the people. Uh, they are the ones who are elected. Uh, no official at the ATF is, uh, or any other agency, is elected and held accountable through the, the, and, the democratic and you believe, process. And you believe the ATF has abused its rulemaking authority here? Yes, and it has done so in a way that, it, that uh, infringes on rights without the American people having a process by which to recall those, uh, th those appointees. And so therefore, is it your position that the rulemaking in question is in fact unconstitutional and unlawful? Yes, in, in several capacities. And therefore, the, it being applied to American citizens would be unlawful and unconstitutional. And therefore, Congress, uh, in its duty in separation of powers, has an obligation to check that overrun executive branch. Would, would the gentlelady agree? I, I would, yes. Well, I appreciate that. And, you know, I would note, I, I heard one of the, my Democratic colleagues earlier, you know, complaining that if we were to go after individuals who are violent criminals, that somehow that would put more people in prison. Yes, that is in fact the goal and the objective of that effort, is if people are violating the law and they are violent and they are a danger to society, then yes, I want them to be in prison. And as a former federal prosecutor who prosecuted bad guys with guns under Project Safe Neighborhoods, a bipartisan effort to try to target criminals who are using guns to carry out violent acts and crime against the American people, yes, I put bad guys in jail and I'm glad I'm glad. I hope we can put more bad guys in jail. But I don't want to put law-abiding citizens in jail who are exercising their Second Amendment rights and being able to defend themselves in their communities. And yet, that's what we're having an executive branch bureaucrat unilaterally decide to do. This should send shivers down the spine of all members of Article 2. And look, I, I don't view this through the lens of it being a democratic administration. I didn't like it when the Trump administration was doing stuff like this. Whether it was the bump stock ban, I didn't like that either. But my colleagues on the other side of the aisle no doubt loved that because they loved the policy outcome. I thought that was bad. I thought it was bad that you go down the road of using executive power with respect to building a wall, which I support. I do support building a wall, but I don't support unending use of emergency powers to carry out that kind of executive action. And I introduced legislation in the previous administration to address that. Because I think we should actually, on a bipartisan basis, try to stand up against the overreach of the executive branch. And in fact, it is our duty in Congress to do so, irrespective of which party is holding power in the executive branch. I would only ask one last question to Mr. Bosco. When you were involved with the creation and development of the stabilizing brace. In your wildest dreams, did you think a bureaucrat would try to say that you didn't have a Second Amendment right to be able to use that? And could you please extol uh, and ex uh, accentuate the benefits of the, of the brace? I never, never would have thought that ATF would unilaterally make a decision through the bureaucratic process to ban my product. Again, and as I said before, that's up to you guys. That's not up to a bureaucratic agency. The product was designed, again, as a safety product, an orthotic device. It changes nothing on the firearm. I have no disagreement with ATF's ability to do their job of putting criminals in prison, but I don't think anybody on this side should agree to give the ATF the authority to unilaterally 
make a, a, a product illegal and circumvent the legislative process. That's the only reason I'm here to talk about you guys, with you guys, is to say that. I don't want ATF to do that. If you want to do that, then you do that. But don't let an executive agency circumvent your, your power, your authority. Without a yield back, thank you, Chairman.